thank you very much. And uh, finally, we are there. <laughs> so Alessandra Gennari from the University of uh, um, Unipo from uh, uh, Novara uh, replaced Matteo Lambertini, and he replaced Alessandra yesterday. So yeah. welcome <laughs> we exchanged. Well, they, as our medical oncology representative here. And uh, I would like to introduce Saverio Caini, that is our epidemiologist and the former epidemiologist of this consensus. And uh, everyone you know, Andrea Morandi, that is the leader of the preclinical pre science of this uh, uh, project. So, okay, I'm just an ambassador, so you can do many, many other memes about me. <laughs> and uh, so on behalf of the consensus statements faculty and panelists, I'm quite excited, so I'm sorry for the Italian, English, Spanish that I can, uh, <laughs> I can go out, so I'm in Florence. Uh, these are my disclosure. Uh, so I have, th I have uh, had the pleasure to uh, present the preliminary work of this consensus statements that is a teamwork uh, during the last uh, European Congress, ESTRO, because this is just the last song of a nice uh, uh, collection of songs. Of course, the rationale, I think, that we discussed the two days all together with a nice discussion, it is, it is really an, uh, an odd topic, not only concerning breast cancer, how to optimally integrate uh, systemic therapies, uh, uh, new agents and radiation therapy, how to properly integrate systemic therapy and radiation therapy in this era of oncology where every day, uh, luckily, new agents uh, are uh, available for our patients uh, and luckily uh, radiation therapy evolved a lot at the same time in terms of uh, safety and effect effectiveness but sometimes there is lack of data so first of all everything starts one year ago when uh, uh, this is the uh, faculty and the core group of the consensus statement i will never end to thanks uh, uh, them. As you can see, uh, there is uh, a leader in terms of uh, epidemiology and statistics, statistics because the quality of sites is really important when we want to perform a consensus statement that is basically based on a level 5 expert opinion. So it is really important to follow uh, a method. Without a methodology, it would be impossible. And then uh, the medical oncologist uh, source, Matteo is not here today due to another important uh, uh, course, uh, but uh, he led yesterday several sessions and, and uh, helped us in developing this uh, consensus. So thank you very much to all the medical oncologists. Evandro and Nadia also are not here uh, due to the ESMO board, otherwise all the faculty is here in Florence. And thank you to the pre basic science experts led by Andrea Morandi, but we really had the pleasure to have uh, this during these two days uh, to have an insights of the preclinical model. This is a very important part that sometimes is missing in our world. And then my uh, uh, big friends and mentors of radiation uh, oncologist breast cancer network in Europe and not only in Europe uh, and my dear colleague at the University of Florence, thanks to them, this, all this was uh, possible. So. The consensus is endorsed officially by the European Society of Radiation Oncology. Philip Pormans is the coordinator of the uh, committee, subgroup committee of focus on breast, uh, committee guidelines of ESTRO, and has been endorsed. And thank you to the Italian uh, Society of Radiation Oncology and Clinical Oncology and Medical Oncology, and supported by uh, No Profit Foundation uh, uh, Firenze uh, Radiotherapia Oncologica. Uh, so the workflow. Um, first of all, uh, we have to we had to define the uh, context, uh, and the context uh, uh, need an endpoint, and we decided that the endpoint of these recommendations uh, is the safety. So it's not the efficacy of combinatory uh, strategy, radiotherapy, and systemic drug. This would be another consensus, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, just safety and the primary tumor so we decided to focus on breast cancer then where possible of course the setting we try to have findings from the non-metastatic setting and the metastatic setting uh, and depending on the available findings uh, the radiation therapy intent when we have data on ablative intent or palliative intent this is very important not to mix the intent of radiation therapy because everything's changed in dose, in fractionation, in uh, safety of 
the treatment. And of course, the site, also because there are difference in terms of guidelines and recommendations how to integrate and treat radiation therapy and systemic therapy depending on the treatment of intracranial uh, target or extracranial target. So this is the context basically. Then we set the questions. So which are the most important generalizable question in this setting? There is a uh, uh, general question number one, that is the general requirement uh, in terms of uh, uh, which are the features that we should collect when we investigate a drug and we should integrate with radiation therapy. So yesterday, Orit Kata person uh, gave her lecture on the importance of a minimal requirement in, in trials, also investigating drugs rather than uh, radiation therapy alone. So there is a specific task force uh, that work on that we are preparing over then the main paper on the consensus also specific manifesto uh, on, on those by the uh, European Society of Radiation Oncology to be spread in our community and then the second question of course this focus on the base on the available evidence uh, what is the safety of that specific target uh, agents and uh, radiation therapy uh, we said ablative intracranial, palliative intracranial, ablative extracranial, or palliative extracranial, and in the early, in the adjuvant, in the adjuvant setting. And then the wording, because otherwise it's a problem if we don't speak the same, the same language, of course. So we decided to use uh, uh, this uh, uh, structure. So we give the level of evidence concerning the available findings on that drug and combinatory uh, strategy, and then the grade of recommendation. This is really important, and we follow also, and I would like to officially thank you, Shani Palushimon, that she is a leader in the ESMO guide and development, we try to follow what they have done over the years uh, in an excellent way, really. And it's very important to have a nice uh, side of uh, the level of evidence that's sometimes completely independent uh, if you compare with the grade of recommendations. Sometimes this is a problem when there, are, there should be links. So it is completely independent, the level of evidence and the grade of recommendation of the extra panel. So you can find in our recommendation some specific wording level. Uh, depending on the strength of recommendation, where there is a stronger moderate evidence in favor of a combinatory strategy we use uh, could be offered. Otherwise, there is no data we decided to use should be investigated. So we decided together to give always positive perspective in our recommendation. Only when available data say there is not indication to, to due to safety warning, then we decided to use uh, should not be offered, otherwise should be investigated. And when the, there is a really uh, sort of uh, insufficient evidence for efficacy and safety, but we would like to say there are promising results, uh, we use this could be considered on a case by case uh, uh, basis, of course. So that's the stage. Then, uh, then uh, everything started here when with the University of, Flor of Florence and Genova we worked together to just a critical review, not a systematic review. What, what, what was the evidence about breast cancer and combining radiation therapy and systemic drugs? So basically that was the preclinical effectiveness, the clinical toxic effect that is already there. We, that, that we look at the level of evidence, basically this was really low three, four, even five in a certain, in a certain uh, cases. So what we conclude, why don't organize a recommendation consensus statements? Why don't you do it in Florence and so on? So that was the starting point. But uh, what we could do, just it was just a critical uh, review. Then we need an expert panel. And this is, I would like to thank you very much, all the expert panel that worked with us during the last year. That as you can see, there is a balance in terms of countries, uh, in terms of gender, in terms of specialties, representatives and backgrounds. So really thank you very much because all of them really work a lot on this uh, project. 
uh, we start doing a sort of systematic review just to decide if the critical review should be updated or not between 2020 and 2022 and that's basically uh, we ask the faculty if do you think that after that systematic general systematic review of the drug agents uh, that it needed uh, an update of the critical review uh, paragraph so the faculty expressed their opinion and concerning NTR2 non-ADC PIT3, mTOR, PARP inhibitor and immunotherapy. The reply was yes, an update of the paragraph is needed at that time. Uh, if an update was considered, uh, how's the priority low? New evidence may have been published, but the recommendations are still valid. So basically, uh, 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 partial uh, uh, considerations only published evidence was made an update of the critical review. But Concerning CDK46 inhibitors and um, focus on antibody drug conjugate TDM1, the reply was different and new evidence uh, were published. Probably the literature required again a revision and the faculty decided to perform also two systematic review and meta-analysis. So, so we need to work a lot. So uh, as uh, the memo said, I try to be just the, the coordinator of a big group of super people. And we had five task group. So the expert panel was involved in, in all these task groups. So the CDK for six inhibitors and PIK3 m inhibitors that have to perform one systematic review and the revision of critical review and then the recommendation, preliminary recommendation for Delphi. Then there was the task force two on anti do not uh, uh, antibody drug conjugate and antibody drug conjugate. That's a separate uh, uh, paragraph that had to perform the systematic review on TDM1 and radiation therapy and uh, the update of the critical review and then the recommendations. Uh, and then the task force three uh, focus on PARP inhibitors and immunotherapy that they've just, just, okay, <laughs> not just because a lot of data in these two specific as, you, as we already heard now, revision critical review and recommendations and then the task force force that it may be uh, the the most challenging the most challenging question about the general requirements so a lot of people involved uh, on that specific task and uh, the Andrea Morandi group with the preclinical update of all the preclinical uh, data available for uh, combination so that's the working group uh, and how we work, uh, we have the literature revision, then the preliminary Delphi, we needed two Delphi uh, voting, uh, and the first and the second, after this public presentation, if needed some minor uh, uh, amendments, to the maybe a Delphi, uh, third Delphi round would be needed, otherwise no, and the systematic review have been worked and submitted after revision by the group, both are submitted. Uh, the first one uh, it's, uh, was uh, published online just yesterday about the CDK46 inhibitors and radiation therapy. So we are really happy uh, to show you just the uh, preliminary uh, um, results in uh, figures about uh, CDK46 inhibitors and radiation therapy. These findings uh, help us uh, on, uh, perform the recommendation. Uh, first name Carlotta Beccherini and uh, Luca Visani and the whole group of the task force and the faculty uh, was involved. So thank you very much because this is already a first uh, important step that we reach. The TDM1 and radiation therapy systematic review and meta-analysis basically led by Viola Salvestrini and the group and the task force group uh, uh, is still uh, under revision and these are the uh, basically the preliminary uh, results about the intracranial uh, effect uh, uh, based on the available evidence of radiation therapy and TDM1 skin reaction in the early setting and pneumonitis that is the three main uh, challenging questions uh, when we use TDM1 and radiation therapy in breast cancer. So we will see the final outcome. 
Oh, finally, some rules about the Delphi. After COVID, everybody want to do Delphi. No, not everybody want to do, but we have done a lot of Delphi. So we are really expert now uh, about modified. So we can modify it always, so we can do whatever we want. No, no, it's not true. It's a modified <laughs> Delphi, so we uh, uh, decided to use this system. It was very nice to, to have a loop with all the faculty and panel. We use uh, Google Form, uh, and then uh, we use the five-point scale and remember that the agreement is reached only in case of uh, four agreement and five strong agreement uh, is not agreement in, in, in case of three that is uncertain uh, results. After the first Delphi, in case of less than 75% of consensus, uh, a discussion was made uh, among the group uh, and they tried to modify the statements for the second uh, Delphi round. In case of negative results, again, no any other modification was allowed, so we have two shots to try to reach the uh, consensus uh, and we are really happy with the results. We can use different treasures, so we decided to use the highest just to be as much possible high quality level in terms of recommendations, so we use the 75%. Okay, consensus statement meeting. So we are here, uh, we just presented on May uh, the preliminary part without the consensus, you should come in Florence, otherwise nothing. And so basically you are great and you are here and now we are going to show the consensus statements. Uh, key question one, Minimal requirements of radiation therapy features in clinical trials assessing new drugs for breast cancer. I think that everybody agree that long-term safety data is needed for combining new biological agents with radiation therapy for patients with early breast cancer. Level of evidence five, uh, strength of recommendation A, strong consensus 95%. When combining new agents and radiation therapy, reporting on radiation therapy details and toxicity should be mandatory. When reporting safety data, we discussed a lot yesterday for both the early and advanced setting. Again, the level of evidence, of course, is expert opinion, but the strength of recommendation A. There is unanimous consensus, and there is an unanimous consensus also for the last two statements. There is, of course, a lack of high quality clinical data concerning the combination of radiation therapy and new drugs for breast cancer and prospective research studies are strongly recommending to strengthen the evidence base. We have got the chance to discuss yesterday and also today that there are several potential strategies how to properly integrate radiation therapy details in prospective studies in an early phase from the beginning after uh, uh, the closure of the trials. So we, we had several ideas now and it's very important uh, that we had this discussion during these two days. And finally, of course, the potential risk, benefit and uncertainties regarding the combination of radiation therapy and new drug for breast cancer should be fully discussed with the patient. And I think that Tania Spanish yesterday gave us a I think really an important talk uh, about the em engagement of patient in this context that should be directed also from the patient, not only from a doctor perspective, but of course communication, counseling uh, and empathy is a key if we want to do a good job, I think. Okay, key question two, current evidence regarding the safety profile uh, of the specific target agents in combination with radiation therapy. The first drug category, CDK46 uh, inhibitors. So statements 1A, CDK46 inhibitors and concomitant radiation therapy during adjuvant local regional radiation therapy should be investigated in the context of a clinical trial or prospective registration course. This is a level of evidence five and a strength of recommendation A. There is no safety report concerning uh, concomitant radiation therapy and CDK46 inhibitor in the adjuvant setting. But not specific warning, so we should further investigate. CDK46 inhibitors and concomitant radiotherapy during wall brain radiotherapy or intracranial stereotactic radiotherapy, again, should be investigated in the context of clinical trials or prospective registration course. Yesterday, we saw very well that there are heterogeneous uh, results 
and few, few limited data concerning intracranial treatment and the use of combinatory CDK46 inhibitors, especially for whole brain radiotherapy, no data, and few patients with uh, ablative radiotherapy when an intracranial target is irradiated. Strong consensus. C and finally, CDK46 inhibitors and concomitant radiotherapy could be offered during palliative and ablative extracranial radiotherapy. Level of evidence, very low. Four, strength of recommendation, B. So there is a moderate evidence that is not something that should be avoided at all. It depends on the target, it depends on the volume, it depends on the organs at risk, it depends on the dose. So uh, this is the typical example where a multidisciplinary approach with a case-by-case -case discussion can really give an option to our patients even when a clinical trial is not available. So Please, this is something that we should always discuss about treatment, combinatory treatment. Let's move on. PIK3 inhibitors, uh, uh, basically, we have got data. Uh, we know that there is not uh, uh, um, uh, much, much diffuse the use of PIK3 inhibitors in the breast cancer setting. We know very well why. But anyway, PIK3 inhibitors and concomitant radiation therapy should not be offer due to warning uh, uh, findings concerning the association. This is uh, level of evidence five, but strength of recommendation negative D. And mTOR inhibitors, uh, uh, again, uh, drugs as several limus in breast cancer, mTOR inhibitors and concomitant radiation therapy should not be offered again. So level of evidence five, strength of recommendation C, but is a negative recommendation. Currently, uh, there is no clear evidence on the safety of combined treatments inhibitors in both metastatic and non-metastatic settings. There is a strong consensus for the recommendation 2A, 90%, and a strong consensus on the recommendation 3A, 95%. Or oh, anterior two agents, non ADC. So here we have more data, as we discussed yesterday. So trastuzumab, pertuzumab, and concomitant radiation therapy could be offered during adjuvant local regional radiation therapy for breast cancer. Data from clinical trials, uh, level of evidence one, strength of recommendation A, unanimous consensus. So this is something that we already do in our routine practice and we decided to strengthen this recommendation. Trastuzumab, pertuzumab and concomitant radiation therapy could be offered also during whole brain and ablative uh, intracranial stereotactic radiotherapy. Here, the level of evidence that we discuss is lower, is four, but the strength of recommendation is moderate high, B. Also in this case, we obtain a strong consensus, 97.5, percent in favor of a safe uh, combination of drug and radiation therapy. And concerning lapatinib, that is another drug that has been a lot evaluated in, in the context of combinatory treatment, much less than used than in, uh, in current uh, routine practice in breast cancer. But we know that lapatinib and concomitant radiation therapy during adjuvant local regional radiotherapy for breast cancer is safe because we have a, not a lot of data on this strategy. Although currently, of course, uh, lapatinib is not approved in early breast cancer setting but we have enough data to stand uh, with the recommendation in favor of the safety. Lepetinib and concomitant radiation therapy should be offered for whole brain and ablative intracranial stereotactic. Here you have data, level of evidence two, and the strand of recommendation uh, B. We obtain a consensus of 87.5%, so it's safe, the combinatory treatment, uh, also when uh, an intracranial target is treated. And finally, and this is an important message, the newer TKIs, uh, neratinib, tucatinib, just for an example, and concomitant radiation therapy should be investigated in the context of clinical trial or prospective registration course, of course, so high quality collection data, because we have no data. It is not possible anymore because we really uh, use this uh, drug in our current practice. So level of evidence five, strand of recommendation C, strong of consensus 97.5%. ADC, uh, we have got data now. TDM1 uh, is the most uh, investigated uh, drug as we 
heard uh, during the meeting, TDM1 and concomitant radiation therapy might be considered for adjuvant local regional radiotherapy for breast cancer. I think this is a very important statement because uh, there are also, it's a really a challenging question if we can integrate TDM1 or not uh, in the adjuvant setting. A lot of patients receive now after incomplete response after primary systemic therapy. So uh, it's very important. We reach a strong consensus in favor of the safe uh, uh, combination. Level of evidence too, because we have clinical trial, though is not directly investigating as primary endpoint the safety of the combinatory treatment, but we have data on treatment that receive radiation therapy in the context of a phase three trial. And the strength of recommendation is C, the strong consensus, 92.5%. However, TDM1 uh, and concomitant radiation therapy had a lot of data concerning intracranial treatment and definitely should not be offered for whole brain and ablative intracranial stereotactic radiotherapy as we observed due to an increase, significant increase in terms of radionecrosis uh, uh, synergistic effects. The level of evidence is for but there are several reports uh, and they are going all in the same direction. So the radionecrosis is higher when combined with radiation therapy. Level of evidence for strength of recommendation D, strong consensus in uh, fav against the recommendation, 90%. And finally, again, newer ADC, even more important than the previous statement, such as trastuzumab, the Ruxtec, and all the drugs that are arriving, as Hope yesterday showed in her amazing lecture, and concomitant radiation therapy should be investigated in the context of clinical trial or prospective registration course. Level of evidence to strength of recommendation, hey, currently really there is no evidence of the safety of combinatory treatment, but we should further investigate. You can see unanimous consensus, 100%. PARP inhibitors, PARP inhibitors and concomitant radiation therapy for the neoadjuvant and metastatic breast cancer setting should be investigated in the context of clinical trial or prospective registration course. We decided for this positive perspective message because as we discussed the, this morning, we really want to use this combinatory strategy when we have data on safety, because we really think that this could be the point for a synergistic effect of radiation therapy and PARP inhibitors, mostly in the new adjuvant, so pre-operative setting. But we need also safety data, and as Sophia discussed this morning, long-term safety data because now our patients, even in the metastatic setting, have very long survival. Radiation therapy is not only acute toxicity, it's also collection data over time to really know if the combination is uh, safe. So strong consensus, 97.5%, level of evidence to strength of recommendation A but PARP inhibitors and concomitant radiation therapy should not be offered for advanced breast cancer outside the clinical trials now, because here we have got data and are a bit uh, cautionary in terms of the combinatory treatment. Level of evidence two, strength of recommendation D, and consensus of data, uh, 80%. Safety data on PARP inhibitors is really limited, and the few data available in are basically in the uh, metastatic, metastatic setting. And finally, immunotherapy. I think that here we reach another important recommendation. So immunotherapy and concomitant radiation therapy really might be considered for adjuvant local regional radiotherapy for breast cancer. We had got evidence. Uh, taking account the half-life of immunotherapy and how many patients now will receive immunotherapy in the adjuvant setting after the lecture by Javier and, and we know very well that we uh, need recommendation otherwise given radiation therapy after the end of the immunotherapy for example is something that really have no sense so level of evidence uh, uh, f um, five strength of recommendation c but a strong consensus in favor of the combinatory uh, treatment and immunotherapy and concomitant radiation therapy including ultra hyperfractionated regimens uh, used for stereotactic radiation therapy should be 
offer for advanced breast cancer. Level evidence two, strand or recommendation B. It's true that data mostly derived from other solid organ tumors, but Stephanie shows how many findings have we got about the safety of this uh, combination, always on a case-by-case -case discussion, again, in the metastatic setting, what you are going to treat, but basically, we reach a consensus that is in line with a consortium with the S3 RTC that already had uh, an agreement in favor of combinatory treatment that was be made on the basis of the findings from solid, uh, the other solid tumors. So we obtain a strong consensus, level evidence two, standard recommendation B, strong consensus 92.5%. That's it. So some acknowledgement, then discussion until the end, because the discussion is the most important part, I think, of this uh, meeting. I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, all our young ambassadors uh, that they treated everything in this uh, one day and a half, and Gil Morgan, that behind the curtains is <laughs> there, that is going to uncle alert, alert and spread whatever we say here, just to notice you that yesterday, after 18 hours, uh, we had three millions of impressions, that it was like... 4.6 Ah, 4.6 million, okay, <laughs> you can... <laughs> <laughs> it was like St. Gallen after three days, wow. so... Six person engaged, <laughs> that's the result. And I think it's really important to focus on the engagement of people in uh, knowledge sharing. This is really important, and uh, thank you very much. So thank you very much, really, you did a great job. Um, and on behalf of Onco Alert, uh, uh, taking account that all presentation will be available uh, since Tuesday and shared on the Onco Alert, Onco Alert newsletter. This is the website, so people really that was, wasn't able to attend in person here, there wasn't uh, a streaming, uh, uh, so this was the very first pilot uh, uh, pilot uh, uh, meeting. Uh, I hope there will be really a Florence 25, 27, every two years thing, we not every year, please, I need to, <laughs> to <laughs> brief a bit. And uh, two, three years, so let me decide. Uh, and the sponsor for course that in a fully unconditioned way uh, support us for in completely independently perform our, they are not aware of what we are going to say. It's in negative, it was nobody asked for and they support it, fully support it uh, and allow us to be uh, here. And all my friends, uh, the, uh, really, the, uh, too much. All the, my friends that are always here with me during the year at 2 a.m. with the emails uh, at the uh, meeting, uh, my family, breast cancer family uh, that is all around the world. Uh, for me, really, it was a, a pleasure to host in Florence at the, with all the staff of Florence University. I will never end to, uh, to thanks because we always say thank you, Ikro, thank you, Ikro. But Ikro, without all the staff, uh, really can't do anything. So really, I would like to thank you very much. You are a great group, and thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>